I'm just trying to buy time. So thank you all for, for attending my presentation about everything that you may wanted or never wanted to know about building containers in OBS. Thanks you all for attending. Apparently choosing a juicy title works to attract some, uh, to attract some audience. So first I have to apologize. I'm only half as well as prepared as you all deserve, but hopefully that will be enough. Otherwise, I'm sorry. I'm sorry anyway. So what makes me qualified to talk about this? Um, a bit maybe, so I'm, I'm Dan. I work at SUSE as a software developer and I have became more or less the BCI, which is our container offering in SUSE, the release engineer for that. I also do things in the Fedora community and if I actually sit at a computer at home, then I do stuff with home automation and break all my lighting just for fun because I like sitting in the dark. Um, in case you want to stalk me further, somewhere on social media or wherever else, there's my homepage. There might be blog posts. I think one. I'm not good at updating. Anyway, so back on topic. Um, first, we'll cover more or less the parts. So I guess you are here because you want to build containers. Otherwise, there's other talks. You can still silently leave. I won't judge. Um, then we'll cover really the essential parts, what you should know, and then we'll gradually drift into the parts that you maybe want to know, maybe didn't want to know. They may, might be useful, maybe not. If we have time, then there'll be a demo. So if you have something that you'd like to see, prepare your questions because I'm very unprepared. Uh, and of course questions. But uh, I would like to encourage you, if there's anything unclear during the presentation, just ask. So I hope that the slides contain all the info in case we don't get through it. Um, but it would be far more useful to really explain the stuff very well. So, you want to build containers. And you thought about using OBS. So why should you do that? Why not use just GitHub Actions? And uh, at least in my opinion, the feature number one, like with many things with OBS, is automated rebuilds. OBS rebuilds everything automatically. So if you create a container that's based on your distribution, OBS will track all the dependencies that you have in there. If the dependencies get updated, OBS will rebuild the container. If your container is based on another container built by OBS, and the container gets updated, OBS will trigger a rebuild. And at least for containers, as far as I know, the only other build system that can do that is OpenShift. And, well, in case you want to run OpenShift, have fun. Um, what OBS also does automatically is it has a built-in registry. So that's probably many people don't know that, but you build a container and you have publishing enabled, it will automatically publish that container. Not even GitLab CI does that. I mean, or GitHub CI. You can do it rather easily, but uh, in OBS it happens automatically, which is also rather convenient. If you just want to set up a quick container for your CI, for instance, on GitLab or on GitHub, then that's, uh, that's a really great thing. Another maybe less pure reason is you want to create a new flavor, a new image based on OpenSUSE that's official or for SLEE. You got to use OBS for that. Or, well, you, you, have no other, you have no other tool to use here. And if you want to create really, really tiny images without very, very horrible hacks that include copying parts of the file system into a scratch image and whatnot, then OBS can do that for you as well. And you don't have to use Alpine for that. Actually, you can't, but you don't have to use Alpine for that. So which tools do you have available? Of course, you can just use the usual docker-podman combination, or well, either docker or podman to build something from a docker file. Or you can use Kiwi. So m maybe uh, just, a, just a quick poll. Who has heard something of Kiwi? 
wow, okay. Uh, I, so j just a quick summary for anyone who di didn't, uh, who doesn't really know Kiwi. Kiwi is just a, uh, it's an image builder that can build more or less anything that you want. It's very well integrated into the build service. It can also build containers. It's not super convenient if you're used to Docker files, um, but that's the tool that you'd use to create those tiny images. Uh, wait, dash. I'm sorry, I, there was, there should have been a slide in here. Ah, right, this one. So when should you use which tool? And my, my recommendation is use whatever you're familiar with. That's reason number one. If you don't know which one to use, my personal recommendation would be to just pick Docker or Podman and use Docker files uh, because literally everyone else uses them. And it's just, you're just gonna find more help. Uh, if you want to create a uh, super, super tiny image, go with Kiwi. Because Kiwi, what, uh, what Kiwi essentially can do is Kiwi can create a bootstrap image where it will, it will essentially do this copying into Scratch for you and you don't have to do it correctly because Kiwi does it by itself most of the time. I mean, all software is buggy, but Kiwi does it pretty well. And I'm probably not gonna get many fans by this slide, but when should you not use OBS? Because as ever, everything has downsides. Um, biggest problem is you are using a distro that's not based on zipper, DNF, or apt. Then OBS can't, uh, uh, then OBS Docker file support doesn't support that. So then if you wanna use, if you wanna build an Arc Linux container, You'll have to do that with Kiwi. If you want to do something else, it won't really work. Or submit a patch. Or that. Or just submit a patch. And we all know how easy that is. Um, if you have one of those complicated Docker files, I guess you all have seen them, where there's like 500 curl instructions from the web, and they run all kinds of very interesting, uh, very interesting things. Then OBS might also not be the best thing because OBS builds run in network isolation, so you'll have to pre-download everything, and it's not going to be fun at all. But you can work around that. Um, if you really want to have previous releases of your image to stay on the registry. That's also not natively enabled in OBS. You can, I have slides how to do that, um, but it's extra work. So if you want to do that very, very easily, it's not enabled by default in OBS just because if the build service would store every rebuild of every image, it would run out of disk space in just about now. Um, and also, if you are very unfamiliar with OBS, maybe don't start with it. It's not a simple tool to grok. Okay, let's start with, uh, uh, with two minimal examples. These are more meant as a, um, as a reference for later on. So, these slides, sorry. Um, so first, what, you, what you'll have to do is create a project, create a package, and set up a repository. And you can either steal something from, uh, from what we use in Devil BCI Tumbleweed, where we essentially have a standard repository with all these complicated paths in there. So this just uh, pulls essentially all the, uh, it pulls all the standard and image repositories from factory for all the ar architectures that we care about. And then we have a repository called container file. It's called container file. That's just a convention. You'll see that all over the place, but it's just a convention. You can call it Peter if you want, but people will get confused. Um, and in this one, uh, we just include uh, the standard repository. And also in this example, there's also another one included that I'll show later on. Or what you can also do is you just go to the OBS web UI and uh, you search for create new image. 
you create uh, you click on the create new uh, create new docker file based on the open source templates image and then you'll get essentially this thing um different uh, difference in here is you get uh, you get repositories with different names and they are set to rebuild local but you can uh, you can just change that so essentially you have a containers repository for every uh, for every single architecture uh, I don't prefer prefer this one because if you want to apply a project config then you have to uh, then you have to add many if statements um, or well you have to, your if statement gets rather complicated but uh, so this one this one will also work this one is definitely this one you'll get out of the box if you just use the web UI on OBS then actually for building containers I don't think that you need a project conf setting um, you can set the you can set the repository type to docker um, and you can also define whether OBS will use docker or podman by default it will use docker but you can tell it to use podman for building and uh, that should be more or less it then you can just create a docker file and now we start to get into the peculiarities of building containers based on docker files so first thing is the from line the from line will more or less tell you what uh, what is your base image uh, and here OBS takes uh, takes this container image from your repositories without the registry prefix in this case OpenSUSE tumbleweed that's uh, that's also what gets published on registry.opensuse.org as OpenSUSE tumbleweed um, you could build one yourself with exactly this tag then uh, you have to add uh, add this magic comment that will tell OBS to add a tag to the to the finally built image well and then you can more or less do whatever you like in this case you would run uh, in, in this case I just put in there to install git and add the rest of your docker file minimal example now sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't and uh, the thing is in uh, what happens inside OBS is so first your builds ha don't have any network access so if you do a uh, curl or something it will fail you have to pre-download all your sources um, then also my, uh, what, uh, what might be surprising is that all your layers after, uh, get squashed into one build um, who who knows what what me uh, what it means that you squash all the layers not everyone okay so just uh so what uh, what will happen during a uh, during a build with uh, with docker or builder or podman is um, you'll take your base image and every one of these instructions will create a so-called new layer which is essentially just an archive and uh, what you can uh, what usually this build tools exploit is that you can um, that you can cache them so if you run a rebuild and nothing in that uh, and nothing in one of these instructions changed it will reuse this layer for the build it speeds up local building it it can also speed up downloading but uh, it's not done in OBS for reasons we will see in a second uh, and that is OBS docker support so for all of this to work especially for uh, especially for installing packages because this docker file showed you we run a zipper in and uh, you all could have uh, could have cried bullshit because I said we run a network isolation how's that gonna work uh, so that's uh, that's what OBS Docker support does. Uh, it sets up uh, it sets up wrappers for apt, zipper, and DNF. Sets up local repos. OBS will parse the whole Docker file for zipper, apt, and DNF instructions. Resolve the dependencies. Pre-download all the packages. Put them in the build root. Start the uh, start the Docker build this OBS docker support will then uh, will then run the install from there 
and then it will uninstall itself in the last step, and then it will squash all the layers, so that especially that you don't have these install OBS Docker support and remove it again in the, in the image. And that's also one of the disadvantages, because if your, uh, if your image, uh, if your Docker file uses a script to install something, so if you just have a dot install sh, and that has your zipper in instructions, it won't work, because OBS will not parse that. So if you want to install something, um, yeah, all your calls must be in the Docker file. So if you just have a Docker file which just executes a few scripts, you'll have to copy paste them in there, sorry. Um, another thing is also your user must be, the user of your image must be root. So some, uh, some images set a different user. They are mostly not meant to be modified later on. Um, but these images will not really work. You have to then reset the user and do all kinds of things. Okay, hopefully I haven't scared you enough, uh, a lot yet. So, Kiwi. Kiwi uses the one markup language you all love, XML. I have, uh, I have added just a short excerpt of a Kiwi example, um, but I'll confess when I write Kiwi build descriptions, I just copy and paste them from somewhere else. So uh, you, can look up, uh, you can look up everything that's, uh, that's written in the manual, or you can just copy and paste it like I do. It's worked so far. We're still alive. Um, as I said, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend to use Kiwi as a first start, but it's great if you want to, for instance, build something based on BusyBox. Uh, so let's just go quickly through it. Uh, you have to, uh, the interesting thing about, uh, about Kiwi is you define the, you can actually define the image name. This is uh, mostly interesting for OBS internals. For Docker file builds, it just takes, I think, the package name. Um, and then you really, here, uh, here in this preferences element, you really set all the uh, all the interesting stuff. So you just say, okay, this is a, uh, this is a Docker image. Important part: this is the from line. You have to pre-include the OBS repositories. That just will uh, that will just uh, tell OBS to pick the image from uh, from the repositories itself. And then you use a kind of comparable syntax to uh, to what I showed in the Docker file. Just replace the colon with a hash. I fell into the trap as well. So just keep that in mind. And then you can define the, uh, the name of the image, tags. You can define a maintainer. You can define additional tags. You can also set a version. This is, again, maybe we'll get through it. Yeah, maybe. Um, this is, uh, this is really interesting for, for publishing in a re release repo later on. So the repository setup looks kind of crazy, dangerous, like the, like the previous example. And it's, again, just, uh, uh, just pulling in everything from the distro. Uh, so the images repositories. And I'm just showing this here for, uh, for later on in case you want to copy paste it out of that. I, I hope it will work. It works in Devil BCI. Uh, or you can just do the same, the same dance with uh, grabbing the images repository from, um, from OpenSUSE templates, images tumbleweed. For the, uh, for the project config, again, in this case, you want, to, uh, you want to tell OBS to use the repo type Kiwi, but I think it might, uh, might auto-detect it, and then just add these settings, which uh, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what they do. They make it do the correct things. <laughs> and then it should work. So, um, then, one of the very useful things of OBS is the registry. You can access the one from, uh, from, uh, from build.opensuse.org on registry.opensuse.org. Uh, the thing looks, uh, you, you can, it has a web interface, you can just go on it, and it will automatically, so if you have publishing enabled in your repository, you will, your images will automatically get published. You get such a nice web interface 
where every uh, every container is shown, and uh, so the UR, the URL of your container um, can be found like this. So you get the prefix of the registry with build.opensuse.org. That's registry.opensuse.org. After that, you get the project name, where every colon is replaced by a slash because you can't put colons in a uh, in a registry URL. And the thing is lower cased. So as you can see that in this example, the project would have been BCI colon CR colon tumbleweed, etc. After that, you get the repository name, and after that, the build tag. So this is how you can uh, how you can find out how your image will uh, under which name it will be published. So if you want to tag images, and you do that with Docker, then you just add a command line flag. Problem is, if you want to do that in OBS, uh, you can't tell it how to invoke Docker for good reasons, because then you could do evil things, and we don't want you to do evil things on OBS. So therefore, there are magic commons that you just add in a Docker file. Um, you can add as many as you like. I don't know if there's an upper limit. Maybe you can try, but please don't try it when I'm working. I would like OBS to work. And you can do the same thing in Kiwi. So there's again magic commons for uh, this time in XML. And then also, you can also add these into the container config. So, so sorry? Uh. I add both. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, what? Okay, so Adrian said you. So only the additional tags should uh, should be enough. Then I can simplify our Kiwi XML. Great. Um, okay. Another very useful thing is if you want to run local builds, um, then you would just you have created your you have created your container and you run your you run your local build. So you run OSC build and then you get a ton of output and it might take a while or it might take just a few seconds and then it will spit you out the build results and at some point you'll get this something something dot docker dot tar. Um, and if you now want to actually test it, and you don't want to uh, wait for OBS to build it and commit it and wait for it to publish, then you can just use podman load minus i, and then you take this this horrendously long path that ends with the docker dot tar, and then podman. You can also use Docker, so it doesn't matter. I guess Nerd CTL supports that as well, but I haven't tried that. You just give it this path. It will again spit out a bit of output, and it will tell you under which uh, under which tags it's saved locally, and you can just run it like that. Uh, what this what this tag will exactly uh, be? Just just take a look what it shows up here. So this is, uh, but this is definitely far faster than committing and waiting for OBS to build, and it reduces load on the build service. So, another fun thing, multi-arc containers. If you want to build something for multiple architectures, um, then in the, uh, in the usual case, OBS will take one, your one Docker file and it will build it for all architectures. You, so I think there's, there's hacks how you can build an image for different architectures from different Docker files in different packages and then aggregate everything together. I've heard rumors that it's possible. I haven't checked how it's exactly done. Um, so, but by default, you can get by with just one Docker file. Um, that can pose problems if you, for instance, uh, if you just want to install certain packages. But in the usual case, maybe you just want to build it on only one architecture or you say, well, I don't really care about S390X. So let's just say, okay, I'm just going. I'm just interested about this architecture. Then it will just build on x86-64 and arch-64, or I want to exclude these two architectures, and then the whole package will not be built on these. 
or you can, uh, you for instance want to run certain instructions only on a certain architecture. Then you can do tricks like this, that you check what's the, what's the current architecture and if it matches, then install a package. And if you do exactly this, you will run into fun problems because the, uh, because the OBS parser of course doesn't understand this line exactly. It will just try, okay, so I have to throw in this AMD64 only package on my, uh, into my build route, also on ARP64. Oops, so that no, that's not gonna work, but fortunately, there's magic comments for that as well. Uh, so there's arch exclusive line or arch exclude line, which do more or less exactly what you'd expect on the tin. You don't have to take pictures, the slides are on GitHub. I'll share a link at the end. So you can of course t still take pictures, but just telling you, you don't have to. But I would have worn a nicer t-shirt for you then. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what, you, uh, what you can do. But a word of warning, this, this comment really is just for the scheduler and just for creating your build route. So whatever you put in here gets executed on all architectures. Just because you write here arch exclusive line doesn't mean OBS is not gonna execute it. So you still have to include this kerfuffle to ensure that it's not executed or that it is executed. So uh, let's say you want, to, uh, you want to build your container based on a, uh, based on a registry. Um, so OBS supports, uh, supports including registries and what you can do is you create a DOD, so that's download on demand repository um, for instance, there's one example on build.opensuse.org. The project is called SUSE colon registry and that's registry.suse.com. Um, let me just quickly, uh, quickly show you the important part. Please disable publishing. You'll just republish the other registry, which would be kind of wasteful. And then you create a download on demand repository where you tell it the architecture URL and repo type registry and then include the arch element. You can add more of these for all the other architectures. I just excluded them for brevity here. Um, so you could add for registry.suse.com also ARM, PowerPC and S390X. And, and then you would just uh, include it in your project where you want it as this registry thing and it should, it should then work. Um, one problem that you might run into with, with a registry or generally is the very much dreaded have choice for. That happens with containers as well. Uh, and unfortunately it's even less fun in this case uh, because OBS will do an internal mangling of the build tags that you can't really predict. Um, or, well, it's, it's, implementation, it's an implementation detail so my recommendation is if you get a have choice for actually at any time, but also with containers, OSC build info minus D, then include the project name, the package name, uh, repo architecture, and at some point you'll see undecided about if you have a have choice for, and then it will show you uh, th then it will show you the contain uh, then it will show you container, which means in this case the container image. This is the part you're looking for. This is this mangled build tag, and then where it came from. And now in this case, uh, this is actually an error that we ran into in the BCI project. Um, so now you'd have to tell OBS which one to pick. And you could decide, okay, I want the one from the registry or from the, uh, or from the OBS project. And depending on that, you would add a prefer or, a, so this one is actually a deprefer. So this would go into the project config. Um, and you would just tell it, don't prefer this one. So BCI underscore open JDK, that's the one from the registry. And this, uh, and BCI dash, 
open the ADK dash, that's what the one from the OBS project. This is generally an approach that works also if you have an undis if you have an have choice for literally everywhere, or if you have dependency issues, just OBS built info minus D. That's well, in my opinion, one of the most useful features. And the one that very few people actually know. Now No, it doesn't. Hmm? It's not the same. There's an underscore here and there's a colon here. <laughs> then that would, it shouldn't. They shouldn't be the same. I mean, these, so actually these two images have the same build tag. They have really the same build tag. They're actually more or less the same image because for uh, unrelated reasons, but they are more or less the same image. But OBS picked this build tag. I don't know why. Ask, ask MLS, he's there. Sorry. But <laughs> yeah. But if you have like two registries that perhaps pick out the same tag, how would OBS and they would have the same like Yeah, so the, the question was what would happen if you'd had two, uh, if you have, if you have two registries and images with the same tag, uh, then, uh, then in theory the, sh the first path should win. But again, as I said, these images had the same tag and they just, and OBS decided, uh, put them, uh, gave them different names. So it, I would say it's a rare case. So it, I hope it doesn't happen very often. Okay, it's a bug. <laughs> okay, so in theory they should have uh, they should have the same name, and then then the first one would win. Then the first path would win. Um, Okay, so as I'm great with time management, I would try to breeze through the helper services, which might, I hope is a bit, uh, is also a part you are all looking for. Uh, so, what to do with these Docker files? You have curl, uh, you have curl instructions somewhere, um, and you don't want to pre-download everything. Fortunately, Docker files now also support this remote asset URL. Um, you can just you, uh, you can just add this magic comment. There you add a there you add the URL, and OBS will download it for you. Pbuild will also do that. So the, and then this this binary will just down, be downloaded into your current working directory, and everything should uh, uh, so it will be done for the build. I don't think that you even have to check it in. So that one, that one works, uh, works pretty well. And in contrast to the documentation, it actually works in Docker files. Uh, it also works in Kiwi files. So there you use, uh, there you use this comment. And for complete, uh, for, for completeness, there's also the, uh, there's also the link to the documentation. So you can use also, you can use HTTP, HTTPS. Um, then, what was the? Uh, you can also use Fedora's dist git and git URLs. I think so. That should be probably it. Uh, then the name with the with the terrific name that could have come from my uh, could have been my invention because I shouldn't be naming things. So it's a service called Replace Using Package Version, but it uh, pretty much describes what it says on the tin. So the idea is you want to tag your image. For example, you create an Nginx image and you want to have the tag that's the version of Nginx. You could now, of course, every time there's a new Nginx release, commit a new version of your Docker file and after a few months you'll hate yourself or you'll create automation for that or both. Um, or you could just use this service because that's exactly what it has been designed for. So 
this is just an example. So what you tell the service is you just define a uh, you define yourself a regular expression. In this case, I just pick this one, but you can pick literally any string, and then you create a service file. It might look a little horrible, but it's really just you just have to spell out this uh, very short name, set it as build time, tell it in which file to look, then you give it the reg uh, this regular expression to replace the package, and whether to use uh, whether to use the full version, just the major version, major minor, major minor patch, and uh, so what this service will do is. It will run. Uh, it will parse. Uh, it will use RPM to get the version of the package in the build root that you specified it, and it will replace it uh, in the specified file. You can add as many as you like. I mean, as long as you are fine with the build taking ages, um, and you can. Uh, and as I said, you can define which uh, how exactly that is done. You can also replace the regex. Uh, the regex can be there multiple times. So, and we are using that in quite a few places. Quite convenient. Um, then there's also the meta info helper, which does something similar. So this is a link to the uh, to the readme on build.opensuse.org. And it uh, has a few built-in variables like uh, uh, like percentage release per uh, percentage. That's the uh, that's the build service internal uh, rebuild counter and uh, check-in counter. So that's what you get at the end of the uh, of the ver uh, of the version or OS version that it takes from at the OS release. And there's plenty others. Uh, it will by default replace these in the build recipe. So there you can't define in which file to replace them. Uh, so it will just pick the build recipe file, so Docker file, Kiwi. It can also do it in Helm charts, uh, and it looks. Uh, it, you can use it, for instance, like this. So there's things like OS version ID, service pack. That's very interesting for SLE. The build time, source URL, which will link directly to wherever you downloaded it, and so on. So just take a look at the README. But this is this is especially useful for things like Leap or SLE. Uh, then I actually last week I found out there's a replace using env um, service. Uh, this one replaces by default uh, percentage percentage var name with uh, with the variable var name from the environment where the build runs. Um, and the thing is, you can uh, it can run an arbitrary script to set the environment where you can go really crazy if you want to, and if you have if you have very special needs for your uh, for your Docker file, uh, it's used in kubevert, where they have defined this package version and package release, uh, and also a bunch of other stuff. And how this service uh, how this service roughly looks like is you give it a file, you give it which variables to replace in there, and then which script to evaluate. So you could really use this to create a very, very complicated uh, or accommodate a very complicated setup because everything that you put in the project config can be evaluated via RPM minus E. And you can use that to set, your, to set your current environment. So if you want to go really nuts, go ahead. But my recommendation would be don't. Keep it simple. But you can. Uh, one last thing. Yeah, uh, let's talk quickly about labels. Um, so labels are just a key value metadata that you can add to container images. Um, they are f uh, there's a few predefined labels. For for some reason there are, there are label rules in OpenSUSE that you have to adhere to. I've linked them in the in the slides. Um, and unfortunately. Labels are only per total image and not per layer. So if you start building images based on something, they get overwritten, and so that this doesn't happen, we have a uh, we have a service for that. That's called Kiwi Label Helper or Docker Label Helper. Um, so what this uh, what this essentially does is you define your you define your base label. And uh, these label helpers will duplicate it with a prefix. 
So suddenly out of, uh, out of the label org open containers image title, you would also get an org open SUSE uh, title, uh, tiny title. And this will just preserve it for, for later on if, you, if someone would build an image on that. That's, but I'd say that's really only important for uh, if you submit something to, to open SUSE. Uh, so, since I'm great with time management and we only have five minutes left, um, I, would, uh, I would maybe jump a bit ahead and ask if there are any questions or if there's anything that you really would like to see or know or have anything, anything that I can directly answer. I guess it's probably a common problem, but if I have an application, for example, that needs a, a different container underneath, for example, a database, um, how can I invoke that? And also, how can I pass the database arguments to the build and later on to the container? Uh, you, you want to build a... I have an application that needs a database. Mm -hmm. So I can probably pull another container um, for that database, which is running inside the database, uh, where the database runs inside on, but I need to make sure that these two communicate together. And that, that that's not, I don't think that's possible. So what, what is exposed here is about building your application image. It's not running the image. So when you run the image, then you can run the two containers together and then ensure they're communicating. But here is just about building your uh, your application image. Yeah, but should I uh, declare that a container is required at build time? No, you don't, you don't need to, re to, to declare anything. It's just um, documentation, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. So if you, if you really have multiple containers that should interact with each other, there's, uh, these are usually then deployed via another mechanism like Docker Compose or Kubernetes YAML or systemd services with Podman. Uh, I was under the impression that uh, to build a container with uh, OBS, that Docker file had to be at the root of the repository from what I understood from the context that's not necessary, you can just define it and the docker file can be wherever in the repository. What do you mean in the repository? Like, if you have, uh, if you, the repository of the, like in the OBS, the packets, mm -hmm. the, pa the project repository, the project, yeah. You just uh. create a package. You create a package? Yes. Uh, so, g give me a sec. You... In the package, but if the package has like direct subdirectories, yeah, okay. Uh, packages on OBS don't have subdirectories. Uh, they c so this is how it should look like. You have yeah. a package, and there you have your Docker file. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Um, we already established that OBS can track the dependencies and trigger automatic rebuilds. However, if you have an application that takes part of its dependencies from OBS, for instance, the, just as an example, the Golang container, and part of its dependencies from outside, for instance, from GitHub, what is a non-horrible way of still having the automated build of doing this? Mm. So the pragmatic approach would be ignore the part on GitHub, your container will be rebuilt very frequently anyway. Um, plus you can also schedule, uh, you can also schedule rebuilds in, uh, so you can just keep your repository uh, set up to just automatically rebuild, but you can still trigger rebuilds manually if you can somehow trace that the stuff on GitHub changed. So actually, I think you so you can trigger rebuilds with tokens. 
So if your if your software is packet is uh, is actually under your control, you could set up a Git, uh, a job on GitHub or GitLab that will trigger a rebuild of your container on uh, on OBS. If it's not, hmm? Then set up a cron job yeah. that will trigger a rebuild every day. Very good overview, Dan. Um, if I understood correctly, you were saying that with the download on demand, we can add external registries to, to build upon, mm -hmm. and we can also, using the Docker file, add um, externally hosted contents to the images. Um, I assume there's probably still restrictions on what we're allowed to do in the public OpenSUSE instance, as far as that goes. Uh. And do we have any size restrictions when doing so? <laughs> I, I guess you want to talk to Adrian about this one. <laughs> only admins can add this download tag, so you can only add it at your own OBS instance. But there's also the Docker Hub registry. So if it's on Docker Hub, um, you could refer, uh, use any content from them uh, by just building against the path, against the local Docker colon registry project, I believe. Um, I mean, they have download restrictions, so it may take some time until OBS is able to download it, but it's caching it, so afterwards it will be faster. Does it answer the question? It's, it's like any... Yes, sure. I mean, uh, anything what comes via download and demand is not a part of our review. I mean, we just redistributing there and. Um, and we need to be allowed to redistribute. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that, that's why you add this thing, publish disable. Yeah, well, no. The readers, as far as I remember, if I'm not a lawyer, is it recorded? No, <laughs> I don't comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we are out of time. Yeah, okay. Thanks you all for attending. <laughs> <laughs>